Hey guys, Donald Wombat here, and today I'm bringing you a video on a wide variety of topics. The first is a pretty big topic and pretty exciting if you ask me. Earlier this morning, the new Xbox, the Xbox One, was released, and at the end of the new Xbox One release, we got the first ever look at Call of Duty Ghosts. It was a pretty cool release event if you stayed up to watch it or saw a replay of it. The new graphics on the next, genera next generation consoles look amazing, and especially comparing the graphics of Modern Warfare 3 compared to the new Call of Duty Ghosts, it is just amazing to see the advancements of quality over just two years. Over the past couple of months, there has been a lot of different sneak peeks and hints that have been released by Infinity Ward. If you go to the Call of Duty homepage, there is a whole page of hints, and they keep getting added to. The Mask Warriors teaser trailer really got me thinking, and a couple of predictions that I made after seeing that trailer were actually true. There was speculation that the plot would be a prequel of Modern Warfare 2 with Ghost as the main character, or a prequel to one of the previous Infinity Ward Call of Duties. But as I predicted, because of the weapons that the soldiers were holding in the Mask Warriors teaser, the plot is set in the future. Another prediction that I made came true as well. In the Masked Warriors teaser trailer, the setting was all in ruins and there was a lot of rubble all over the place. And now we know that the setting of Ghosts is 10 years after America has been conquered and the whole country is in ruins. I was quite pleased I was correct with these predictions. There are also a number of really cool new inclusions in the story and Call of Duty, of Call of Duty Ghosts as well as the multiplayer. The one really cool thing in the story that I'm really looking forward to is the inclusion of an attack dog in your unit. Now dogs are not a new thing to Call of Duty, but I'm really hoping that you'll be able to have a measure of control over this dog. Whether that means you can order it to attack enemies or even take full control of the dog, I think it will be a great addition to the story. There are three main new features to the multiplayer engine that I think will be pretty cool as well. The first is the ability to peek around corners. This feature is already available on the PC, but having never played on PC before, I think this will add a new spec aspect to the multiplayer and I'm looking forward to what this will bring. The second new feature is the ability to slide. They don't show any footage of this in the reveal, but if you watch the behind the scenes video, they explain it in more depth. It looks pretty sweet and kind of similar to the dolphin dive. I can't wait to try it out and see how it works in the multiplayer. The last feature that is new to multiplayer for Infinity Ward is dynamic maps and controllable dynamics in the maps. Now, dynamics in multiplayer maps have been included in the Triarch multiplayer maps, but it is new to Infinity Ward. A flood is mentioned in the behind the scenes video. Something that is totally new to Infinity Ward is the ability to control dynamics in the maps. The behind the scenes video talks about this and shows a log truck losing its load and rolling down a hill. It looks like some maps will have different features like this that can be used to kill enemies in a variety of cool different ways. I think this is a great new feature and will add a new element to the maps. Hopefully there is at least one on every map. So that's a pretty good breakdown of the new Call of Duty Ghosts. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about a big event that is going on tomorrow, Super Thursday. Now earlier on this year I got given the prestigious title of being able to call a Super Day. Basically this day is just a massive piss up with a heap of people and we go out to the pub and have a great night. So this is the first time that I have called a Super Day and it is going, looking like it's going to be a massive night and I can't wait. The pub we are going to has $2.50 pots all night and $5 Jaeger and Skittle Bombs and that's basically all you need for a great night. I experienced a few Super Days last year at uni, and in particular my first Super Day, which was a Super Tuesday, was quite a memorable one, and I will give you guys a quick rundown of what went on. It was a lovely autumn's day, and we started getting on the sauce pretty early, about 2 in the afternoon, which was nothing out, nothing out of the ordinary. Polished off a few beers at Rez, and then headed out to the pub, which is where things started to head downhill pretty quickly. After polishing off too many beers, a few Jaeger bombs, and God knows what else the next... Thing I remember is waking up in the drunk tank in a police station in the city. Not only that, but I had also landed a $550 fine for being drunk in public. Now, considering I can't remember where I was, what I was doing, or who I was with when I got this fine, I'm going to have to say that this was probably fair enough. It didn't end there though. From the police station, I had to get a $50 taxi ride by myself back to uni, and at this stage I was all sorts of crook and as hungover as a goat. I got back to res at about 7.30am, only to realise that I had my first prack for one of my subjects at 8am. After very little sleep, no shower, too many drinks, and not even a change of clothes, I rocked up to my prack looking a lot less to wear. I struggled through and slept for basically the rest of the day. Hopefully this Super Thursday tomorrow is going to be a big night, but not quite that big. Anyway, this is going to wrap up this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed the rundown of Call of Duty story, and my story about the time I got locked up. If you did, feel free to leave a like and a comment, and please subscribe if you haven't already. I've been Wombat, catch you later.